Hey there everyone, Transmonica here, and I'm back with uh, Cinderella Phenomenon. Uh, we ended it on a heartbreaking note, but um, we're starting on a, another note, so yay! Okay. How are these lessons of yours going? I hope that you're not giving anyone a difficult time. I am the only one having a difficult time. Have you tried pairing up with someone? Pairing up. Some of the people in the tavern pair up to assist each other. Two heads are better. Two heads are better than one, as they say. Two heads are better than one, as they say. That's not a bad idea, but the problem, but the problem is her. Who's going to volunteer to put up with the ice princess? She has a point. Many. People may not glare at me anymore, but it does not escape me that I am dis that I'm still disliked. Most of the boarders at the Mar Marchand. Most of the boarders at the Marchand volunteered to help her, remember? I haven't heard any of them retract their offers. That is only a matter of time. Stop it, Delora. It's your choice, Princess. Pairing up is only a suggestion. Would pairing up with someone really help me break my curse? If they end up... What if they end up being an annoyance? What if they only end up being an annoyance instead? Princess? Um, excuse me, princess. I'm sorry for disturbing you, but... You've been staying at... You've been staring at your tray, and the customer is waiting for his order. Oh. Of course. Delora has me helping your niece today. The merchant is unexpectedly busy, and I cannot keep up with all these customers. Stop dream stop daydreaming, Monica. Food doesn't deliver itself. I do not need you to tell me that. I stretch out on my bed. The stiff mattress does little to soothe my aching muscles. I was on my feet the entire day, struggling to keep up with the steady stream of people that come into the Marchant. I have never seen the Marchant this busy. I roll into my stomach. I roll into my stomach and bury my face into my pillow. My arms and legs protest the movement. I refuse to live this type of life much longer. I need to break this curse as soon as possible. Why don't you try pairing up with someone? Pairing up might not pairing up may not be such a bad idea. And this is where we make the choice. And uh, as I as I said earlier, as I said last episode, I want to go down Ralts's uh, Ralts's thing, but I can't do that until uh, I do all of them. I've already done Karma, but I have to do. Uh, one more, and then I can go down walls. Um, I, I almost see the, the lesbian in me, uh, the lesbian in me. Like, I, I, I want to see if I can try going down, uh, I, I wanna, I wanna, I, I wish there was a Parfait slash Delora route, but no, that is unfortunately not a thing. Hey, okay, who knows, maybe I can, like, program a fan game. Where instead, uh, they're all girls. It's lesbians. <laughs> Chapter 3, A Change of Pace. I will ask Rod if he will pair up with me. I know we do not have a good relationship. Rod has spared me no effort in telling me how cruel I have been to his family. But I feel that rectifying that was, but I feel that rectifying whatever mistakes I made with them may be an easy way to get three good deeds. <laughs> oh, this is going to be interesting. But Monica, didn't he tell you that he didn't want to break his curse? Yes, but that may be. Yes, but that may not be the whole truth. 
He's still reluctant to break his curse despite all the advice I've offered him. Perhaps he'd be able to encourage him where I could not. I do not care if he wants to break his curse. I only need him to help me, to help me remedy the supposedly bad things I've done to his family. I believe that would be the easiest way to break my curse. But the problem is that I rarely see him here. He is usually at the palace. In order for this arrangement to work, I need to be in the palace. I, for one, think it's a terrible idea. What if... Dolores' idea... Dolores' voice trails off. She adverts her gaze to the floor, her expression a mixture of anxiety and solemn consideration. What if what? Is there something I need to know? Both the witch and the fairy stare at me silently. Both the witch and the fairy stare at me silently. After a few, after a few moments, Par Parfait speaks. You would be far away from us, princess. We would not be able to assist you. Witches could be lying in wait for you, knowing that you're the true crown princess of Angel. They might seek you to use for their own purposes. What sorts of purposes? Why would, a why would the witches be after me in the first place? Many of them have been many of them have been corrupted by Tenabarum, dark by the Tenabarum. Darkness has invaded their hearts, making them better. Many of them simply want to see the fairy the fairy tale curses continue on undisturbed. This is all just speculation, but it's better to be safe than to be sorry. What would you have me do? Hmm. Delora? I have an idea. I think I can get her into the palace and make sure there's someone there to look out for her. How? Just trust me, tomorrow the Ice Princess returns to the palace. I have a bad I have a bad feeling about this. Maid Monica, we have achieved greatness. In all seriousness, like <laughs> this is this is why. Because this okay let's will the drama in this alone is like I, I want it. I want this. I want this. This is gonna. This is gonna owl. But also, I made Monica. I made Monica. This cannot be happening. Don't dilly dally. The princess will be awake soon and expecting her new maid. I, I close my eyes and suppress my urge to groan. How is it that Dolora was able to turn me into Evangeline's personal maid? She thought this would be funny, did she? Will I make? Well, I will make her pay for this. I expect you should not be late again. We have very strict rules on how the palace staff should behave. I'm not exactly sure how Delora managed this. She told, she told me she was going to cast a spell on me and that it would be over as soon as I opened my eyes. I closed my eyes and sure enough, when I found myself, I opened them back. And when I opened them, I found myself here in a maid uniform. What did she do? The maid continues to babble at me. How annoying. I just pretend to li I pretend to listen to her as she leads me through the palace hallways. Mangeline's are Mangeline and Rod's chambers are located here. Oh. We come into a halt when Mangeline suddenly appears from around the corner. Your Highness. The maid the maid ducks into a neat curtsy. Mangeline's eyes meet mine, and I tense for I tense as I wait for any signs of recognition from her, but she only gives me a curious look as if wondering who I am. She clearly does not recognize me. This maid suddenly reaches back and pulls up my shoulder, forces, forcing me into a bow. You are in front of the crown princess of Angiel. Show some respect, girl. My apologies, your highness. She's new and she clearly needs to be taught some manners. Excuse me? Oh, please, there's no need for that. What is she trying to achieve by pretend? What is she trying? Oh, I like, oh. Oh, this hits too close to home. Oh. What is she trying to achieve by pretending to. Be kind to a palace maid. Who is she trying to fool? 
Your high Your Highness, this is your new personal maid. Evangeline looks at the maid looking confused. Why do I need a personal maid? It is by the king's orders, princess. Evangeline turns to look at me again. What is your name? She's talking to you, girl. <laughs> I scowl at the maid before facing Evangeline. I cannot believe I have fallen so low as that I am being ordered around by a maid. Monica. It was nice to meet it's nice to meet you, Monica. I hope we can get along. When I don't When I do not respond, Evangeline's face falls. I I was just heading to breakfast with my family. Of course, Monica will escort you to the di di dining hall. I raise my eyebrows at the maid, irritated. There's no need for concern. I can get there on my own. Oh, that's the... I breathe a sigh of relief. I am not here to babysit her. The maid, the maid leans forward and whispers something in my ear. I do not know how it is you land in this position, but I, but you owe the royal family, your, the royal family, your diligence and respect. If you continue to show your disrespect, I will have a word. I will be having a word with the king. The maid pushes me forward, so I so I'm forced to stand next to Evangeline. She will escort you to the dining hall, Your Highness. Her job requires that she follow you everywhere in case you require assistance with anything. But it is almost time for it is almost time for breakfast, Princess Evangeline. Magdalene frowns and looks back and looks at me. I'm so sorry. What is she apologizing for? Good morning. Good morning. It seems that you have, it seems that you have met your personal maid. The king's the king's eyes widen as soon as he spots me. You look familiar. Does. Does, does he recognize me? I feel a little tremble in my heart as I consider that hope. Are you not the girl who came to the gates before? I deflate with a soundless sigh. He remembers me as the peasant. It's the first time I am meeting you as per as Magdalene's personal maid. What is your name? Monica. That is a lovely name. Oh, thank you. I'm very glad to have you here, Monica. The king gives me a warm, a warm smile. The softness of his gaze makes me angry. Love. Ow. He never treated me so kindly when he, when he remembered me as his own daughter. Magdalene takes her seat while I walk, while I walk to stand at the wall beside the other maids and butlers. The door opens and Rod walks inside. He greets the king, Ophelia, and his sister. He was just about to take his seat when his eyes suddenly fall on me. The shock is apparent on his face. Something wrong? I see there is a new maid on staff. His tone is almost accusatory. His tone is almost accusatory. I bristle at his words that I'm about to... And I'm about to say something when Ophelia speaks. <laughs> She's Magdalene's personal maid, Monica. Rod stares at me for Rod stares at me for a few moments, his expression unreadable. Eventually, he moves to take his seat. I stand and watch as the, the royal family as they eat their breakfast. The small area is filled with happy conversation. The four of them smile at each other while they speak, and it is easy. The four of them smile at each other. Oh no! The four of them smile at each other when they speak, and it's easy to see how comfortable they are. They all are with one another. When I was still here, our meals were always so quiet, but everyone looks so happy now. Oh! Ow! I bite my feeling with. I bite my lip to wield the heavy feeling away. 
Rod told me bef that before, but I didn't want to believe him. I turned back to the conversation at hand. We have something really important to discuss with you, Madeline. Uh, oh? I've brought this up before, but now the matter is more pressing. Is this about... Yes, this is about the ball. There's going to be a ball! Uh, this game is built for me. This game is built for me. Ophelia gives the king a disapproving look. Dear, I know it sounds like a sp I know it sounds like a strange proposition, but this is royal tradition. Evangeline is at a suitable marrying age, and this ball. Oh no! I am not a. I am not a supporter of of forced marriages. L love is love. Don't. But a husband. Uh, combat bullshit. Tinted pink. A royal ball for Evangeline? For her to find a husband? I would have never agreed to such a thing. The king never forced me... The, for, the king never forced me into one because he knew that. I will not force you to marry someone you do not love, Evangeline. We agreed on this ball to uphold tradition. All eligible bachelors will be invited in a four months' time, and you will choose the man you want to court you. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that just sounds... Ugh. Ugh. That's because of goddamn lesbian. I still can't discuss that. I, 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 I still can't accept that about myself. <laughs> I did find my true love through a ball, after all. He glances at Ophelia, who responds with a fond smile. Her expressions fall back onto some, back into something more worried when she looks at her daughter. But what if I can't choose anyone? We will throw the, we will throw one ball as per tradition. We won't force you into another ball if you do not find a good suitor, but we must uphold traditions at least once. Perhaps this will push you to think more about it in the future. Something okay. This could just be wish fulfillment. But I there's a part of me that's screaming that she's pro that she's that she's possibly a lesbian. I I hope maybe. I would not put I will not put any added pressure on you, Mad I will not put any added pressure on you, Madeline. But I would happy to see my grandchildren before I see grandchildren before I have to give up my throne. I'm not getting any younger, you know. Uh, Arthur. I could tell the king is trying to make light of the situation, but there's an undertone of seriousness. Evangeline eventually sighs and slowly nods. I understand. My gaze shifts to Rod to search for a reaction, but it's a but his expression is impassive. No reaction at all. Did he know this was going to happen? But... Can I really be the princess of the kingdom that Angeal deserves? I feel so unprepared. You are the crown princess of Angeal. You must be confident. Imagine looks down, looking genuinely distressed. I... I'm finished, may I be excused? But sweetheart, you barely touched your food. You may. Aww. Evangeline stands up and ducks into a quick curtsy before rushing from the room. I do not move until I can feel Rod's glare on me, and I realize that I am meant to follow Evangeline. Excuse me. I curtsy and follow after Evangeline. I barely make it a few steps away from the dining hall before the door flies open and Rod is rushing after me. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm going to. I mean, I'm going to follow the cheat sheet. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was going to answer it anyways. I'm here to break my curse. Expect me to believe that when you have it. 
can't expect me to believe that when you have people offering to help with you at the man at the marching. Rod's exp Rod's expression changes, anger clear in his eyes. No, I know why you're really here. What are you talking about? You thought you might take back what's rightfully yours, didn't you? You have no qualms of hurt about hurting my family again. I stare at him, non-pulsed by his accusations. I carefully quell the simmering anger inside of me. The last thing I want is to be fired before I break my curse. I am not here to hurt anyone, so please stop accusing me of such things. We, gl we glare at each other in silence. I've always thought that Rod was closed off and quiet, but his emotions are always blazing in his eyes. And you shouldn't be here. Rod steps, Rod steps back, but his gaze is still fierce. I do not have time for this. I'm going to find Imageline. Why, so you can insult her? No, because it is now my job to attend to her. Excuse me. See, this is the, the last place I expect to find Imageline is the throne room. Much to my surprise, I find her standing alone inside, staring up at the throne. Oh! When she turns to face me, she has a guilty expression on her face. I'm sorry. What is she apologizing for? I was very rude earlier, walking out on everyone at breakfast. Imageline gazes back at the throne and sighs. I'm sure every other girl would be happy to have a ball. I mean, it's like something out of a fairy tale. But I... Sighs once again. She sighs once again, looks down at the, her clasped hands. It all sounds so perfect in fairy tales. Three days is all it takes before everyone's found their true love. But that's not. But I don't think that's how it works out in real life, do you? I have nothing to say in response when Imagine turns her beseeching gaze to me. I just... I don't know how I'm supposed to marry someone I barely even know. Is this really what it means to be the crown princess? Isn't this precisely what you wanted? Excuse me? When your mother married the king and you became a princess, you went from riches to rags overnight. You went from rags to riches overnight. I cannot keep the bitterness away from my voice when I speak. Your life is playing out like Cinderella's, is it not? All you are missing is a glass slippers, and even then I'm sure the king could arrange, the, arrange for a pair. I cannot understand why you're so unhappy. Neither can I. Neither can I. Imagine turns up turns away from me to face the throne once more, and in the and in the sun that steams through the windows, I see something shining on her cheeks. Is she crying? I'm so ungrateful. Monica, what would you do? What? If you were in my place, if you became the crown princess overnight, would you go through with the ball? For the sake of Angel's tra tradition? For the sake of your own role? I would never do something so worthless. The king never brought up the subject with me. He most likely knew I would have refused. Imagine said suddenly pats her cheeks and turns me a wry smile on her face. I could do with some fresh air. Shall we go to my friend's shop in town? We have only just exited the throne room when Imagine stopped short and I almost bump into her back. Oh. Mithras. Your Highness, what, your Highness, what a pleasant... Sir Mithros abruptly stops his chair at me. Why is he looking at me so intensely? Is something the matter, Sir Mithros? No, nothing at all, Your Highness. I'm just amused. He has the fairy tale curse and he knows. Called it. Amused? Oh, you haven't met my new maid. This is Monica. Monica? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> There's something in Sir Methro's gaze that I do not trust. The silence is stifling, so I curtsy at him. Sir. Charming. 
I know it was sarcastic, but still. Sir Mithros turns his attention back to Evangeline. Where are you off to on this pleasant day? Oh, just off to visit a friend. Make sure to bring your guards with you, princess. Of course. I wonder what's taking him so long. Evangeline decided to invite Rod to join us on a visit. One of the guards offered to get Rod for her, but she is but he has yet to return. Another stays by the gates, ready to escort us into town. Why does the king even keep these incompetent fools if they cannot find a single person? Maybe we should go look for Lod, Rod. But then, what if he gets here as soon as we go searching for him? I sigh. I will go look for him. You can stay here. But you don't need to run errands for me. She has yet to ask me to do anything. What does she think a maid even does? I look at her solemnly, not answering. Finally, she relents. Thank you, Monica. I incline my head slightly before walking off. I feel like a babysitter. I cannot believe I have to search for a rod. There's, this is only slightly better from, than being dragged around by that broom. <laughs> I turn around the cr <laughs> This is only slightly better. I love that because it both expresses the, expresses the hatred for both the things so clearly. I turn around the corner and ne nearly bump into someone. I took a few step backs just in time. Princess? I look up in sharp I look up in shock. Fritz surprises Fritz is surprised when you're my own. Where have you been? I've been looking for you everywhere. He pauses to stare at my clothing. Why aren't you wearing a maid's uniform? Fritz. Fritz, you remember who I am? I would never forget about you, Princess Monica. But it seems that I am the only one that does remember you. What is going on? What's going on, Princess? The only people who remember me are witches, fairies. Fritz, are you? I stop her on the sound of I stop when I hear the sound of approaching footsteps. Fritz Fritz turns to the sound and then stops, stoops low to a formal bow, and he sees Rod. Your Highness. Here, here, you can you two can have each other. I'll take imagine. Imagine when you will take me. <laughs> Sorry. Uh anxious anxiety. Blah, blah, blah. Rod's impassive face twists with annoyance when he sees me. Rod does not. Rod does not even acknowledge Fritz as he as he, as he walks past him to stop in front of me. Shouldn't you be attending to my sister? I don't understand. Prince Rod, why do you do you know why the princess is dressed like this? Rod is clearly as just surprised as I am that Fritz remembers me. You recognize her? You remember the princess too? But if you knew, then why didn't you say anything when she first went missing? And can someone explain to me wh why she's attending to Princess Bajaline? This is... Fritz. I cut him back- I cut him off before he can ask any more questions. I feel Rod's gaze back on my back as I turn to look at Fritz. No more questions. But Princess, right now I am a palace maid. A what? It is a long story, and I have no time to explain it, so do not ask. Fritz is clearly discon discontent. He seems to struggle for, for a few moments before he finally sighs and nods. Yes, your highness. Though it's nice to hear someone speak my title, it would not do if Fritz calls me that on accident. It's just Monica for now. But... I turn to face Rod. Madeline is waiting. What? A guard could not even deliver her message. Where are you going? Imagine wants to visit her friend's shop in town, and she wants you to go with us, Rod. Normally, I would not mind Fritz joining us, but right now he might be not necessary company. 
may very well give me away. Rod barely wants to speak with me. No, it's just the two of us. I doubt Rod... I doubt Fritz would make him more sociable. I'm assuming that I'm assuming that accompanying you is not an option at this point. Yes. Fritz looks down for a moment before looking at Rod. I'm sorry to ask this of you, Your Highness, but she refu but she refuses to let me do so. Please look after Princess Monica in my place. <laughs> Uh. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I need to be coddled constantly. I'm baby. Even if I did, Rod couldn't care less if I'm her. I will, I will do my best, Sir Flipsterald. I cannot tell if he's being genuine or not. Fritz bows, both of us. Safe, press. Stay safe, friend Monica. And to you, your highness. Rod turns and begins to walk away without another word. Come on. Rod is silent as we make our way back to the palace gates. I think I'm still thinking about what he said to Fritz earlier. Oh, Rod agreed to Fritz's request. Just because he... Just because he wanted him to leave? I stare at Rod's back as he walks in front of me. Sometimes I cannot figure out what he's thinking. Rod, Monica! Evangeline beams when she catches sight of us. Are you ready? Rod crosses his arms. He does not look very happy with his sister. Even though Rod is younger, I can't help but think that he often sounds like the older of the two. I am busy, Evangeline. I can't just keep dropping everything whenever you want to leave this place. I can't I can't keep dropping everything whenever you want to leave the palace. I'm sorry, I just we really needed some fresh air today. You get plenty of you can get some you get uh, you can get plenty of fresh air on the pal on the palace grounds. I felt I needed to be off the palace grounds. Imagine's face drops as she looks down at the ground. Rod lets out an exasperated sigh before stepping inside the carriage. There's a carriage! Ah! I'm hopeless. Come on. Rod? Just for an hour, okay? Thank you. Oh gosh, it's been half an hour already, jeez. That flew by. Um, I'm gonna... Yeah, we're gonna sign out here. Thank you so, so much for watching, and have a great day. Remember to smile. Bye!